Computational thinking is a process which allows us to break down and work out complex problems. According to Barefoot Computing, it allows us to develop skills and techniques to help us solve problems effectively, with or without the aid of a computer. This means there is an element of logical thinking behind it, which computers cannot do as they follow a systematic process of thinking. Barry elaborates on this by saying that computational thinking is not thinking like computers, and reinforces that computers don't think for themselves. Well, not yet at least. Ultimately, what computational thinking comes down to is knowing that computers can help us solve problems, but initially the problem and how to solve it needs to be understood before one can attempt to tackle it. However, one must remember that computational thinking shouldn't be seen as just a new name for problem solving skills. Computational thinking is formed by a variety of concepts and approaches. The concepts according to barefoot computing are logical thinking, algorithms, decomposition, patterns, abstraction and evaluation. The approaches are tinkering, creating, debugging, persevering and collaborating. So how do these work together? As noted earlier, computers are not logical thinkers as they cannot think for themselves. This is an advantage for humans as it allows them to explain why something is the way it is. It's also a way to work out why something isn't quite as it should be. Thinking logically allows one to recognise patterns in a problem. This is made even simpler by breaking the problem into smaller parts in order to understand it, which is called decomposition. One can then focus on what the important details are, therefore isolating or abstracting the insignificant or problematic factors. Then algorithms, which are simple sequences of instructions, can be designed to solve these smaller problems effectively. Finally, these steps are used to program a computer to help solve the problem in the best way. The approaches are skills which develop through the process. A computational thinker is able to create things, change or tinker small parts for improvement, debug or correct any errors, persevere through the problem until it is solved, and collaborate with peers in order to achieve more than by themselves. As many theorists agree, it is quite apparent how these concepts and approaches do not solely benefit the learning of computing, but can be highly useful in many other aspects of learning in the curriculum as well. The National Curriculum directs that a high-quality computing education equips pupils to use computational thinking and creativity to understand and change the world. It is evident in the modern age how surrounded we are with technology, and how dependent we are becoming on it. This is why it is imperative children begin developing their computational thinking at a young age. As Wing considers, if computational thinking will be used everywhere, then it will touch everyone directly or indirectly. This raises an educational challenge. If computational thinking is added to the repertoire of thinking abilities, then how and when should people learn this kind of thinking, and how and when should we teach it? If we wanted to ensure a common and solid basis of understanding and applying computational thinking for all, then this learning should best be done in the early years of childhood. In the computing curriculum, key stage 1 pupils are expected to use logical reasoning to predict the behaviour of simple programs, like VBOTs, and in key stage 2, children should design, write and debug programs that accomplish specific goals with programs like Scratch. VBOTs and Scratch are efficient mediums to use in developing children's computational thinking as children can create and debug their own code with their own algorithms. This encourages the children to focus on the process of thinking and learning moving beyond what you are learning to how you are learning. During my practice, I have witnessed children use both VBOTs and Scratch, and the development of their computational thinking was evident. By the end of the sessions, many of the pupils had begun to recognise patterns and spot logical problems. They created efficient algorithms in order to understand the problem and effectively achieve their goal. I later identified the same children adapting this way of thinking in their maths and science lessons, recognising problems and decomposing them in order to create an algorithm to answer their problem. This reinforced my own confidence in the teaching of computational thinking in school. In the modern age, we are surrounded by interactive media, but most of us are consumers. We spend time pointing, clicking, browsing and chatting, activities that are important for learning to use technology, but not sufficient developing as a computational thinker. In my teaching, I will endeavour to promote computation as a way for children to develop and express themselves, building essential foundations they can enhance in order to flourish and succeed in this new digital age.